Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another edition of HR Mentorship Learning Series. And today we'll be looking at one of the components that has a massive impact on leadership and general employee productivity. And perhaps a component that is perhaps not utilized adequately enough. I believe is a key component that can be a massive game changer with respect to leadership and employee development. However, I'll leave it to our facilitator to unravel for us. Tonight, our topic is leveraging coaching to drive employee productivity. Leveraging coaching to drive employee productivity. And our facilitator for this special session is Mrs. Bosede Kunle Adenosi. She is a life coach and human resource consultant. She is a seasoned human resource professional with well over 20 years experience in human resource management. This experience cuts across various sectors like banking, oil and gas, where she spent 13 years. She has also experience in the property sector agricultural industries. She's very passionate about human resource management with a soft spot for recruitment. She also had a brief stint internationally where she facilitated the setting up of a new human resource department from the scratch in another country. And she built local capacity and eventually handed over to a country national. Our wide knowledge and experience in human resource include recruitment, talent management, performance management, compensation management, succession planning, employee relations, employee statistics, and records keeping. She is also versatile in the area of international human resources and human resource policy formulation and implementation. Bosset is a certified coach of the reputable Maxwell leadership team. She also holds a master's in managerial psychology from the University of Lagos. And she is also an associate member of the Chartered Institute of Personnel Management of Nigeria, CIPA. At the moment, she is a life coach and human resource consultant. I think we are highly privileged to have someone who is extremely resourceful and fully fit and capable to deliver this session. Please, with virtual emoticons, emojis, and however we can show love virtually, let's welcome the Ministry of Bosse. Over to you, man. Wow, thank you so much. I'm so glad to be here this evening. I, I really appreciate what Mr. Luyemi Adjoshua is doing. I, I'm excited about it and I really appreciate him. It's really fantastic. Let's um, give it up for him. If you can clap emoji, clap for him. It's fantastic. So let's get back to, let's get right to what we want to do tonight. So we want to talk about coaching. You know, like I, like um, Mr. Adjoshua said that, um, I have a soft spot for um, recruitment, but I also am growing a soft spot for coaching. It's something so, so wonderful. And, you know, if I talk about it, except you experience it, you might not really understand the power of coaching, but we would have like a sneak peek towards the end of the presentation. We'll have a small group coaching so that everybody can participate. So let's begin. So, um, What's wrong with my, okay, sorry. Table of contents, we'll be talking about history of coaching, what coaching is. Then we'll be separating coaching from other things that people confuse it with, counseling, consulting, mentoring. We're talking about benefits of coaching, where coaching cannot help, how coaching can improve productivity, how to develop coaching skills, and an example of life coaching. So brief history of coaching, um, it emerged in the mid 20th um, century where it was actually, everybody knows that in football and in sports generally, 
we have football coaches, we have coaches and all that. But it was during the mid 20th century that they started developing the principles and applying it to personal development, professional success and business growth. So that's when it emerged as life coaching or personal coaching. And like I said, most people confuse coaching with mentoring, consulting, counseling and all sorts. So what exactly is coaching? So I'd like you to, um, if you can put it in the chat, when we say coaching, life coaching or personal coaching, what comes to your mind? You can put it in, your, uh, in, in the chat or you can write it down somewhere. So as I try to explain it so that you see whether you really understood what coaching is and you know, where you can make amends that, okay, refine your definition of coaching. So coaching is um, defined as partnering with clients. When I say clients, that means the person that is being coached in a thought-provoking and creative process that inspires to maximize their personal and professional potential. Personal because the, the, the whole person is involved. It's not just a particular part. It's not, it's not just professional, but because we are whole beings. Whatever affects you affects your profession, affects your career. So coaching deals with your person, not just a, a an aspect of your life. And it's about many things, but it's basically about change. It's about transformation. It's about getting from where you are at the moment to where you want to be. It's about developing emotional intelligence and getting emotionally aware, conscious about your decisions, about your actions. In business, coaching is a leadership behavior that lies in the opposite direction of command and control, meaning that it's something that leaders can use to elicit performance from their subordinates. So it's not about commanding and controlling people, it's about you know, influence. And like I said, it affects the whole person, not just the role and the business issues. So coaching also focuses on client where the person presently is and where they are going to is about getting clarity about their vision to eliminate, eliminate obstacles and move them forward to success in an accelerated way that means on your own if you are supposed to achieve the goal in like a year with coaching you can probably achieve it in one month or less it's that powerful. So let's um, differentiate between coaching and counseling. Coaching is actually forward focus. Counseling tends to deal more with past issues, basically trauma that someone is clinging to. It's, but for coaching, it's more forward focus. It's not about trauma. In coaching, the past might come up because definitely the past is part of us, but it's for the purpose of clarifying the present, not resolving the past. And it's a simple rule of thumb that if an issue in the past is, uh, is, is an issue, if something that happened in the past is an issue and the client, as in the person that is supposed to be coached, cannot get past that, counseling might actually be better, not coaching. But if you know your past is past is a fact, but you know it's not affecting you negatively, then you're probably ready for the client probably ready for coaching. So coaching versus consulting. You know, in coaching, the client is responsible for the results because the client is the one that would take the actions and not the coach. So the in coaching sessions, the clients will identify how they can do things, do it differently. But in consulting, the consultant actually takes responsibility for a project and is responsible to deliver the, the project and provide specific deliverables. So in coaching, coaching is not the guru. The coaching doesn't, the coach doesn't have the answers, is actually trying to help 
the client to get the answers that lies within them and is not presently in their consciousness. So the coach is not the guru like the consultant. You know, the consultant, so to say, is like the guru knows what to do and, you know, is going to do it and provide the rules. But the coach is not the guru. The coach actually helps the clients to find the answers that is lying within them. So the coach is not a specialist. So the coach does not need to know everything. The coach just applies the principles of coaching to help the clients move from where they are to where they are going, which is, you know, is might be totally different from what the coach, you know, has in mind. It depends on, you know, where the client wants to go. Then coaching versus mentoring. You know, most of the time people interchange coaching and mentoring, coaching and mentoring, coaching and mentoring. Sometimes the lines are blurry and, you know, People don't know the difference, but it's actually very, very different. A coach is different from a mentor. So what exactly is the difference? You know, a coach focuses on the person's development, their unique path, which might be different from the path of the coach. So it's that's the basic difference. And the coach actually might not have taken that path that is trying to you know, help the clients to take. Whereas a mentor actually guides the mentee to a specific path. And the mentor must have walked that path before. It must be similar to the path at which the client wants to go. There must be a similarity. If there's no similarity, there's no need for that person to be a mentor. So the main difference is that for the mentor, the path, that the client wants to take is similar to the one that the mentor has taken. Probably at a, at the mentor is at a further advanced um, 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 position than the client. So however, like I said, the coach is taking, might take a different path. So it doesn't have to, for instance, as a coach, I don't have to be, um, I don't have to be, a HR consultant to be able to, an HR person to be able to coach an HR manager, or I don't have to be an entrepreneur to be able to coach an entrepreneur. It's, it doesn't work that way. As long as a coach is skilled in coaching, he can coach anybody because it's different from mentoring. So like in mentoring, the mentor tells the client what to do, but in coaching, it is unprofessional to tell the client what to do. The client needs to come to their own results, their own answers on their own, but the coach just guides the person, starts basically asking questions to help the person bring out to their consciousness what has really been hidden within. You will see all these things I'm explaining when we go to the example of um, the last session of coaching. So benefits of coaching, and uh, you know, as I've been speaking about it, I'm sure you would have been picking some benefits. It's, you know, like I said, it's taking someone from where they are to where they want to be. So it helps in goal setting and it motivates you to achieve the goals. It helps in personal growth and development. It helps you to manage your time and productivity because, you are more conscious of what you're doing. Sorry, my dog. <laughs> you are more conscious of what you are doing, what you're supposed to focus on, and you are, you are able to get rid of what you are not supposed to do. So it helps in improved relationships and communication. That is a given. Definitely, when you are more aware, when you are, not, when you are more emotionally aware, it affects all your relationships, all your relationships. Like for me, as a, as a Christian, coaching has helped my relationship with God. I tell you, it has helped my relationship with my husband, with my kids, with everybody around me. It has helped so, so much. It improves relationship. It helps you to re reduce stress and anxiety because there are some things that you get aware of that so many things that you've been stressing yourself over, you just feel that it doesn't really matter. You don't 
sweat the small stuff anymore. I tell you, you don't sweat it because you know it's not relevant. You, in fact, one of the most important and benefits of coaching is that it helps you to overcome limiting beliefs and behavior because you are able to bring all those limiting beliefs to your consciousness. So it helps you to overcome them. It helps you to deal with it and exchange it with empowering beliefs, beliefs that will serve you and is serving you to where you're going. It helps in, I've mentioned that self-awareness, self-esteem, better decision-making problems, helps you to develop problem solving skills, improved work balance, achieving a fulfilling and meaningful life. And I like to say, whatever your position in life, whatever your position in life, coaching can help you. Whatever, coaching can help you because it's the most and most powerful transformational tool. So whatever your position in life, coaching can help. So, but there are some things that coaching will not help. Not that it will not help in future, but at the present, the person probably needs some form of intervention before coaching will help them in the future. Like it's not uh, appropriate for people that have um, drug abuse, drug addicts and alcohol addicts because they need to you know, see a therapist, a counselor to, get, to deal with that drug addiction before they can now get into coaching. You need to deal with that first. For people that have suffered abuse, you know, those are definitely they need therapists. It's coaching is not a shoulder to cry on. It's not to you know vent and talk about your anger and all that. It's not that's not what coaching is. Then it's not for people that are abusing others, and it's not for people experiencing mental illness. A therapist will work better in all these situations because coaching will not help in that. After the therapist actually does their work, coaching can come in, but the therapist will work better in this situation. So how can coaching improve productivity? Like I said, it's, um, it has been said that it's the most transformative process known to man. So it will definitely improve the quality of leadership in an organization. And it's about goal setting and goal getting. So and overcoming challenges and learning along the way. So definitely it's, it's going to improve the productivity when the quality of um, the goals and how they're getting the goals is actually improved. Then in people in executive management, as in, you know, John Maxwell, that um, the founder of the coaching academy I attended, he said that, he said that um, everything stops on leadership. Everything rises and falls on leadership. So, you know, when you see an organization and you see that there's something wrong, check the leadership. Don't look at the, don't look at the, the employees, check the leadership of that organization and you, you would easily see what exactly is the problem. So it's encouraged that people within organization in leadership, they have their own personal coaches, which I believe the organization should pay for and the whole organization will benefit to benefit in terms of exceptional leadership and to improve decision making and definitely improve productivity. And I also mentioned how you can develop coaching skills, especially as HR practitioners. It's, it's something that is very, very wonderful if you can develop coaching skills. Most importantly is to get a personal coach. So for you to be able to experience the power of coaching, how it transforms your life, you need to have a personal coach. You can do group coaching, you can do all that, but the best and the most powerful of coaching types is the one-on-one -on -one coaching, whereby you have your own coach, and which is definitely confidential. You can bear your heart out to your coach. You can talk about anything. Just like the fact that I'm a coach, after going through certifications and you know all that, until I had my own personal coach, I couldn't function. 
I couldn't even function as a coach. I couldn't do anything until I got my own personal coach and went through the coaching process and experienced the transformative power of coaching. It's not, it's not that I'm trying to, you know, um, hype coaching, but is actually very, very transformative. And you cannot experience that transformative power except you have your own personal coach. And when you have your own personal coach, it's not just for just you to have just one session and say, okay, it's not working. I would, no, you have to, at least for me, it took me like, um, like four months for me to actually experience. At the first session, I was like, yes, this is the, this is wonderful because what I wasn't able to achieve in two years, I was able to achieve it in a month. But I didn't really experience that power until like three to four months of constant coaching every two, two weeks. I meet up with my coach and all that. So I was able to experience the power of coaching and it revolutionized my life. Then you know, because you cannot actually give what you don't have, except you experience that power of coaching. You can't, you, you can't effectively coach or even have an idea of what it is. So with that, you can actually do some one-on-one, -on -one, you know, coaching of um, fellow employees and all that. And you can appreciate that you need to, you know, talk to management, executive management, management how why they need their own personal coaches when you have experienced the power of coaching and if you now want to deepen your skills and you know want to now you know do more of coaching you can read more books attend seminars enroll in coaching courses and certification programs so that you can deepen your knowledge so i now want us to have a life coaching example so I hope everybody has like um, writing materials where you can write somewhere. If you don't have, just quickly get it. Let me wait for like two, two minutes. Just get um, something you can write on. So I think I can continue now. Everybody has something they can write on. All right. So I want you to write down what your goals are for the next three months. You can, you can have it... Um, Let's, let's just pick three aspects of your life, maybe family, career, income, and you can have something called personal. Just write it down. What are your goals for the next three months? As in, okay, we are in May, June, July, August. In August, and by the end of August, what do you want to see? Your, where do you want to see yourself? If you want um, probably another job, you can write it down. If you want like um, a promotion in where you are, you can write it down. In the next three months. And if three months is like a short, it's too short for you to, you know, to plan on maybe six months, you can extend it to six months. What do you want to see? in the next six months? What's your goals are in the next three months? Three to six months. 
So have you written that down? I hope so. So, so now list the actions you need to take to achieve these goals. List the actions. This thing, this thing actually needs thoughts. I don't know how I can um, give enough time for the thoughts. Because I'll need to, I need some, I'll, I'll need a volunteer to help us share what they can, they have written down and um, So if you have finished listing down the actions, you can just write just a few actions. So you also need to list what opportunities you have that are facing you with achieving this. What are the opportunities of achieving these goals? Then what are the obstacles you envisage would um, stop you from achieving these goals? And how can you deal with these obstacles? And who can help you with accountability to ensure that all these things that you have listed down and the actions that you've committed to, you actually do it. Who can who are who is the person that you can hold that can hold you accountable? It could be your spouse, it could even be your children, depending on who you have around you. Who can help with accountability? So I'll give you a few minutes for those that um, have not written down because I'm going to I'm going to need a volunteer to to help us with this. Okay, so who can who will volunteer to help us? Who will volunteer so that we can go through this together? What they've written down. I need a volunteer. Yetunde say you will volunteer for us. <laughs> so Yetunde, yeah, go Yetunde, Yetunde, volunteer for us. So I think uh, you can, you need to unmute her, right? She's a co-host. Oh, okay, fantastic. So yesterday, can I hear you? Ah, uh, yeah, today. That noisy <laughs> background is part of the obstacles. <laughs> okay. Don't miss free coaching, no. Even if it is for a few minutes. Yeah, today, <laughs> you will pay. So yesterday, uh, should we wait for you or we should call someone else? Hey, hey today, this is your dark glasses, eh? Esther, Lucia, are you available? Who is available so that we can make you co-host? Just raise your hand, please. Don't be shy. Otherwise, all of us will do it. And we will sleep here tonight. <laughs> we, we, we will sleep here. It was that calling people one after the other. Mrs. Akoni, will you go for us? Why are people shy like this? <laughs> oh yeah, Mr. Joshua, let's 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 let's, let's do you <laughs> because people don't want to show up. Oh, yeah, let's 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 use you now. 
My goal is to make these people talk. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, pick somebody else then until we get someone that would um, volunteer. See my sister all the way from Bayelsa, but I suspect she's busy. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Who will go for us? Ah, somebody says she has to be out briefly. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we can see the some of the challenges of coaching now. And you know, actually, that's why one-on-one -on -one coaching is actually the best because there's a safe space of just you and the coach. So group coaching is what you know what we do because you know people need to experience coaching and probably they might not want they might not be able to afford one-on-one -on -one coaching, but they want to experience it. Okay. My so sister let, you from Biosa. Onajero is going to try. Go, Onajero. Oh. You can I'm... almost speak. You can even put on your video if you want. Okay, good yeah. evening, everyone. Good thank evening. You. You're welcome. Thank you, and thank you for the session. All so right. I, want to, I want to give it a try. All right, fantastic. Thank you very much for your boldness. <laughs> so... So can you tell us what your goals are for the next three months? Okay, you can just pick one. I mean, you can pick career or okay. anyone that makes you feel comfortable. Okay, for career, okay. Uh, for the next three months, I want to be a member of the CIPM. Okay. Fantastic. So um, let's just... Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, we, 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 is that okay? We can work with that? Can, yes, we can work with that. Okay. All right. So that's your goal for the next three months. You want to yes. be a member of the CIPN. Yes. So yes. what are the actions you need to take to achieve the goal? Um, I think I need to register. Okay. Then take the exams. Okay. And pass. All Make right. sure I pass the exams. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. All right. So what, what day are you going to register? Give us a date. On Monday. On Monday, which date? Monday 29th? Okay, okay. Monday 29th. Uh, okay. No, no, we'll be inaugurating our president. Okay, so Tuesday, right? Tuesday, yes. All right. So Tuesday 30th, you are going to register as a member you're going to contact CIPM, right? And register. Yes. Okay. So, yes. so you you know, th that's not the only action you need, but let's work with that, right? Okay. Yes. So this um, registration, on a scale of one to five, five being the mm. highest, one being the lowest, how mm. sure are you that you're going to actually take that step? Four. Four. Okay. Yes. Why, why four? Um, why, not? why not five? Yeah. Uh, I'm not taking five because of unforeseen circumstances. Okay, that's fantastic. Four is fine. So four meaning that apart from an emergency, mm. come Tuesday, 30th of May, they're going to mm. register, right? Okay. Yes. Mm. So what, what opportunities do you see that is um, attached to you achieving this goal? Opportunities. I will be. Uh, I'll be. I'll get more knowledge. Okay. As as an HR person. Okay. I'll also get. Um, um. I'll get more knowledge. I'll get. Um, better. Ne more. More network. More networking okay. with my with other HR practitioners. Okay. Um, what other opportunities? I'll get discounted um, training opportunities with the Institute. Okay. I think that's all I can think of for now. 
Fantastic. So these opportunities, are they motivating enough to help you to achieve these goals? Yes, they are. They are? Okay. Yes. Fantastic. So what obstacles do you envisage? That time. You time. Time. Okay, time. Time. Time is an obstacle. Yes. Ah, okay, time is an obstacle. How is time an obstacle? Uh, so you might plan all these things and something just pops up and you need to put every other thing aside and face and face um, other things. Okay. How often has something like this happened whereby you set some a goal that you want to achieve and time is a hindrance, something happens and you know you can't achieve it? How often does it happen? Very often, no. Very often. Very okay. often, yes. Oh, so, so I'd like us to, you know, dig into these issues. What okay. are the issues that happen that you know, sort of take you off your goal? What are these issues that take your time and affect your goals? Okay, let me give a practical example. Sure. Yeah. Um last year. Okay. I was actually meant to register for the CIPM and then attend the program in Port Harcourt. But somehow, before the, before the, before the, what's it called, the, the event, we had flooding by Elsa. Oh. So uh, movement was hindered. We couldn't move, we couldn't do anything. And then as a result of the flood, we had to take up, um, some measures to help pushing staff suffering in the office because my office is located in Bielsa. Okay. And so you see with that, every every other thing is put aside. And then you are you are you are you're working on something else. Okay. All right. So with that issue of flood, how else can you achieve this, achieve what you wanted to achieve then? Despite the fact that there's a flood, there was a there was flood. Hmm. Um, maybe to have taken leave, taking okay. off, taking time off work. Okay. So, how practicable was it for you to take time off work? So, taking time off work at that time will be very. What's the word? For lack of a better term, I'll say it will be very insensitive. Okay. Yeah, because I mean people were people were suffering at that time as a result of the some people's houses were affected. So you had to relocate them from their houses to elsewhere, you know. And other okay. things, other things you had to put in place. So going up takes that coming up, coming up at that time and saying I'm going on leave, oh, this is my leave period. Even if nobody would stop you or nobody would say anything, it will appear, it will come as insensitive. All right. So apart from taking a leave, so what else could you do? Um, hmm. We create time. Maybe at, at night when you're, when, you're off, when you're off work, create a time for yourself to do what you have to do. Okay, how but do then, you... But then remember that we did not have, we could not move, we could not leave by Elsa at a particular time, at that particular time. Okay. All right, so... So we cut off. So you cannot physically leave. So how mm -hmm. else can you achieve that goal? Let me do it virtually. Okay, fantastic. So virtual, fantastic. Oh. So I'm, I'm trying to see, I'm trying to let people know how you have been able to come up with your options yourself. You understand? Okay. okay. So that virtually, okay. so let's now, let, let's now bring it forward to what we are talking about. Your having to register and all that and you know the obstacles you're facing. How mm. can you, that what you have learned that time that you could use virtual, how can you use it in this situation? How can I use it in this situation? Yes, in case something happens and you cannot physically go to PH where you want to get registered. Mm. 
as virtual, virtual, I can register virtually. I can do it okay. online. Yeah. Fantastic. So you can, you are certain you can do it online, right? I'm not certain, no. Okay, so how can, what will make you to be certain? I'll need to check. I'll need to maybe place a call or ask or send okay, an so, email. Okay, so when do you want to check? Give me a time and a date. When do you want to check? Tuesday. That same Tuesday, right? Yeah. Okay, fantastic. So I hope you are writing all these things down. I'm writing it down. And that you are going to check on Tuesday about virtual, how they can actually, you know, you can re register virtually. Register virtually, yeah. Okay, fantastic. So how you see that we have been able to bring, remove one obstacle from the equation now. Yeah. So the obstacle of, of uh, going physically might not actually be, and time might not be an obstacle anymore. So all these things that you have committed to, who can help you with accountability? Who can you bring in and say, okay, I have committed to doing this on Tuesday and all that. Who can help you to ensure that you do these things? Um, who can help me? Maybe you. Me? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, you're not paying. You're not paying me now, so <laughs> I can help her, coach. I can help her, my friend. Okay, thank you, thank you, Governor. <laughs> Fantastic. So, so you write it down that. Uh, so you you can just make a list of all these things you have committed to with the timeline and send okay. it to him. That if I don't do it on Tuesday, break my head. Though. Okay. <laughs> just kidding. So, you know, you can, and another thing you can, you can also do is, you know, maybe somebody around you physically too. You mm. can also, you can have more than one accountability person. The more the okay. actually, when it actually helps, when you have okay. more people that, that can hold you accountable to ensure that you know, all these things that you are committed to, that you actually do it. Okay. Okay. So, what do you think? What 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 have you learned so far as we've engaged like this? Okay, I've learned that um, yeah, uh, your goal you can set goals. Mm -hmm. You have opportunities for these set goals, and you also have obstacles. You also have obstacles which you can break. You can break these obstacles and achieve your goals. Fantastic. You know, if I had a bell, I would just ring a bell that no, this is my wonderful client that is doing everything. Then one more thing I'd like to add before we get to somebody else that will be willing to share with us. What can you provide as a um what do you call it now? As an incentive for to yourself or as a gift to yourself after you achieve this goal, what can help you to help to keep the motivation up? What do you enjoy doing in your you know in your free time? Hello? Hello, I said what do you enjoy doing? Okay, what do I enjoy doing? Yes, that General can be your... Yeah, generally, I'm 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 looking for something you can give yourself as a gift okay. when you're. Okay, I enjoy traveling. Oh, okay, fantastic. Mm. So depending on, depending on how important this goal is to you, mm. can you give yourself a gift of traveling? Okay. After you. So okay. it's just to help incentivize you to help you to achieve the goal. Like for instance, if um, you set up like an income income goal, like I want to make 10 million in the next three months. Yeah. And you know, you apply, you apply all this process and all that. Uh -huh. And you, as you like traveling, you just say, okay, I'm going to travel to the US 
if I achieve this goal? What do you think? Okay. How, how do you think that incentive will help you in achieving that goal? Uh, it's really help me. It really motivates me. Uh -huh. It's energizing. Yeah, it <laughs> energizes me. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. So thank you very much, Amijeru. I have really enjoyed my time with you. So let's go to the next question. Thank you That's too. Thank you. All right, take care. So the next person, we still have time. Let's just take one more question. Do we don't have any other person that wants to <laughs> <laughs> that she has left the noisy environment. Oh, okay. me, yeah, my case. <laughs> yes, now you have to break extra through. Okay, oh. Henry, Henry too is volunteering. Henry, I've made you co-host. You can talk. Oh, Let's fantastic. Have a masculine Henry, you're perspective. welcome. Henry, you're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Good evening, Ma. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. You're welcome. Good to have I mean, you on. I actually, thank you so much. Um, I joined earlier, so but um, I was distracted with some um, other work activities. So, but okay. um, uh, let me try because I actually got some little um talk or rather part of the presentation. So, let me try. Yeah. Even if you weren't part of the uh, presentation, just just be you. you, you still get it. So what are your goals for okay. the next three months? Okay, for the next three months, I actually yes. want to um, actually set up a, an office space. Okay. Uh, which is of course, um, more of a consulting firm. So that's oh. um, what I've been looking forward to between now and at least six months anyway. So but um, since it's three months, so it's still something along uh, within the line. Okay. Okay. Well, I, I would like to say something here that when you set goals, make sure it's a bit stretchy, that it will stretch you a bit. Don't set goals that you know that ordinarily you would achieve. Set something that will stretch you. So if six months is okay, just shorten it to three months. That makes okay. it a stretch. You understand? So let's do three months, right? Yes, Okay, fantastic. Okay, that's fine now. Yes, ma'am. So what are the actions you need to take to achieve this goal? Okay, the few actions, uh, my actions already for this is um is to carry out research, um, okay. to know what um I actually want and how I want to go about it. Um I've also conducted research to the environment or rather the a location that matters for this um, um, plan, uh, which of course it has not been an easy one. Um, also, okay. I've also tried to see one or two persons to um, to seek more opinion and advice. Okay. So, so hold, on there. Hold, hold on, Henry. I, I want you to list actions you have not done, not the ones you have done, the ones you have not done. Okay. The the action I've not done is um, I'm yet to accept the fact that I want to set up a um, this this plan, which is to say I'm still having a doubt whether I can do it. Okay. Um, Fantastic. Yes. And so. yes. Also, um, I'm yet to discover what. I want in this very action, or rather this very plan. Okay. So these are the right. two things, of course, that have been troubling me so far. Okay, so have you written that down? Yes. That you are yet to determine if you're, okay. So why do you think that, what you, do you think is hindering you from coming to that um, decision, from being decisive about the fact that you want to set up this consultancy? Think well, think deeply. Okay. What do you think is stopping you? Okay, for me, I would say it's um, um, I would say it's the. To be honest, I would say it's the set of uh, the mindset of the people within me. Um, some of the people I actually call or rather I look up to, 
to seek opinion for. I, I do not get the right um, advice on how to go about this. And then secondly, I'm looking at- Okay, okay. Uh, okay. Oh, oh, hold, hold on, hold on with that, hold on with that. Let's just tackle with this. You said the people around you, they are not getting- Yes, ma'am. Encouragement needed, right? The right okay. motivation, yes, ma'am. Okay, fantastic. So, um, you do you drive? Yes, I do, ma'am. Okay, fantastic. So you have a car, and you you want to you want to go to um, where do you live? Sorry. I'm within Delta State, ma'am. Delta, Delta State. State. Okay, Delta yes. State. Okay. You want to go to, if you are in Wari, you want to go to Asaba. And um, you can drive home. You can drive. And you, you want um, um, maybe like a cousin or a friend to drive you. And the person has said, okay, maybe, maybe not. But the person said, just call me on that day. So the person, you call the person on that day and the person is like, yeah, well, you see. I'm not so sure this, that, 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 and all that. But you can drive and the car is yours and you want to get to Asaba from Wari. What would you do? Ma, ma, sorry, sorry, repeat the question again. I, I didn't get that. that my okay, I said to... the car is yours. You can yes, drive. Yes. You want to get from Asaba to Wari, but you are feeling yes. a little bit lazy. You don't want to drive. You know that maybe you have a cousin that can drive and the person can take you. But on the day when you called the cousin, the cousin is like, you see something happened, my wife, this and all that. And it's like giving you excuses. And you need to get to Asaba because maybe like 10 million is there for you. Somebody wants you to come and collect money. What will you do? I will hurriedly move, drive down to Asaba. <laughs> <laughs> So how can you how, how can you use that analogy on this your situation? Okay, um, I will say to avoid distraction, I'll just have to keep moving. Okay, so you know you are, the car is yours. You have the driving skills. You have you have fuel in your car. You have everything, and some person is dragging you behind. You said you just jump into the car yourself and drive and go and collect your terminal. So how would that, so how can you think like that in this situation? What would help you to think like that in this situation? Okay, so in, in this situation, I would say, so long I, I can drive and then there's something um, I do not need, um, even if of course I, I still need the help of um, an individual, I still need to motivate myself that I can do it, or rather I can drive to head towards what, um, um, uh, or rather to a destination I want you know, to go to. So in this very context now, I will say, um, since there's a plan already for this, I will just keep pushing and drive to where um, I want to be. Okay. Good, fantastic. So what motivates you? What can, what can help to motivate you? What do you need to be thinking to give you that motivation? Or what can help you? Can help the motivation? Okay. Yes. So in, in this context, um, I would just need to employ more um, to seek help for, or rather have a, a kind of a mot um, somebody I look forward to, like a mentor. Or okay. I will also look forward I hope to. You're right. I hope you're writing it down. Yes, oh, yes, yes. I have my pen here with me. Yes, I have my pen with me. And this is so even I... being recorded, so you can go to the recording and and get to that's the yes. beauty of this. Yes. So I will also um I'll look up to a mentor. I will also see how um rather I'll read more and then carry out some research. Um more research and then to avoid more distraction to keep me going. Okay. I also want to ask you, why, why do you want to set up this consultancy? What's, your, what's the reason why? Okay, I have to go for this very decision or for this very plan. One, I'm into that, I'm 
into HR, rather I'm a HR person. And okay. because I'm a HR person, I feel, I feel that the people, of course, within this, loca this, within this uh, uh, location is uh, uh, people or rather company firms are not driving the right, uh, or rather are not having the right resourceful um, HR, um, um, how do I put it? There's no sense of HR direction in some of these um, companies. So they need a consultant or HR people to help them drive this process. Okay. So that's so, the motivation, Ma. Okay, so why does it matter to you? that people don't have that sense of HR consulting? Why does it matter to you? It matters because I want to see the best out of people and also that of organizations, of course, because okay. it's my line of direction. It's the line I'm into. Okay, fantastic. So we are talking about your passion, what you want to see. So can you write down what you want to see? and paint a picture of what you want to see, which you have described just now. That's your why, right? That's what is your motivation. So, yes. okay, all right, so fantastic. So he, right now we have even talked about the obstacles and all that. So in this yes. particular thing, you have mentioned a mentor. So do you think that yes. mentor can help you with accountability to ensure, to ensure that all these things you have listed out that you want to do, the mentor can help you to keep you accountable. Uh, in in most cases, um, the mentor will not um, um, drive that process to keep me accountable. But rather, okay, so who, else um, you, who else can you who, who else can you use to keep you accountable? Okay, so in this, uh, I, I can also improvise, um, um, you know, uh, seek, for example, I have someone I also look up to, which uh, in my place of work, who um, could actually guide me further, because aside having a mentor, of course, who uh, I'm looking up, up, up to, I also have someone, of course, who could, I, I see that this person is driving a start, this particular um, 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 process, and I'm looking at that very direction too. I don't know if I'm actually getting it, but. Okay, okay. So that person, you feel that that person can actually hold you accountable, right? And the person. Yes, yes, ma'am. So, so all these things that you've listed out that you have, um, said that you want to do to be able to achieve your goal in the next three months. So I need you to put the timelines because we are, you know, this is not a proper coaching because of time and the fact that it's a good coaching. You need to put the timeline to all those actions and, you know, give it to that, that person, you, let's call the person uh, your accountability partner. So you can also help a person in that regard so that it becomes like a win-win. So you can also tell the person, the person, ask the person to tell you about their goals and all that so that you can keep them accountable too. So it all is now like a win-win. Person keeps you accountable, you also keep the person accountable. It helps if it's a two-way thing like that. So um, I hope all this is permitted to you. You can actually um, give it to that person and you can hold both of, you, you can both hold each other accountable. So thank you very much for your time. What would you say you've learned briefly just in this our brief session? Honestly, briefly. yes. Honestly, I would say um, I, I've, I've, learned, I've learned that um, I, it's just me that can tell myself that I can do it. I can do it. So if others can do it, I can do it. I've just learned that self-motivation is um, it's not just um, key, but is um, the right um, um, direction is a self drive. I've also learned that um, um, giving up is not an option. Rather, we just need to keep moving. You know, there's something, there's a saying that says, where there's a will, there's always a way. There's always a way. Yeah. 
All right, thank you very much, Henry. So I think we- Thank you so much, Ma. You're welcome. I think we've had enough of the example. So let's take questions. Let's take questions. Questions? Questions? Any questions? Why are people not? I don't even want to talk now. This is a question. I'm not going to ask you. I'm not going to say, tell you to tell me about your goals. Do that thing. Just questions. Just what comes to your mind. <laughs> What's happening now? Okay, me, I have some questions. So. All right, go, please shoot. <laughs> okay, so um, from the two scenarios you, you used now, it's obvious that, um, that there's like a methodology or approach. Do you want to speak a little on that methodology? Um, actually, when it comes to methodology, um, because coaching is personalized. So we have, there's, there's this methodology that, you know, I was taught that, you know, you start with an agenda, you look at the opportunities, you look at the obstacles, then the actions, then there's another one with them, you look at the goals, the obstacles, the process and all that. There are various methodologies. But personally, I prefer, especially when I'm doing one-on-one, -on -one, I prefer to just go with the flow. Because if you just, in coaching, if you depend on methodology, sometimes it doesn't work for some people because people are different. So we are just, what we are trying to do is to bring to consciousness what has been hitherto unconscious in the person. So, Sometimes, you know, you mix and match methodologies. And sometimes you don't, you don't, you, you just throw the methodology away. But the, the key, the key things that is very important in coaching is there has to be an agenda, which is the goal. Very important because if there is no goal, like in a football match, there is no goal. So everybody will just be, <laughs> playing aimlessly but the goal ensures that yes we know what we are all running extending energy exacting energy for we want to score that particular goal we want to take that ball inside that net so there has to be a goal then in every goal that you need to do, of course, there has to be a list of actions that you need to take to achieve that goals. And while taking that actions, definitely there will be obstacles. There's no, there's no way in life that, there's nothing worth getting in life that you will not get like a resistance. So there has to be an obstacle. There has to, there will be obstacles to you achieving that goal. Just like you know, in a football match, when you are, when the striker is going, there's the middle field person from the others trying to you know get the ball from the person and all that. In life, it's like that. There are so many things that want to stop us from achieving our goal. You know, of course, we then there's a major adversary, which is the devil that doesn't want us to achieve anything worth having. And there, in every every action you take, there are always opportunities. There are always opportunities on all sides. There are opportunities with your goals. There are opportunities with the actions. There are opportunities even in the obstacles. There are opportunities, and there's always a way to overcome all those obstacles. And in overcoming the the obstacles, you build resilience. And you would agree with me in life, you need resilience. You need that, especially when it comes to mental resilience. For you to achieve anything, you need mental resilience because definitely there will be naysayers. There will be some obstacles and some challenges you never thought about, but resilience helps you to overcome all those obstacles, you know? Like when Henry was saying, 
he, he now realized that he can, he can actually achieve those goals. He doesn't need to look at those that don't want to help him. He just needs to tell himself that, yes, I can do it. I can do it. And, you know, one thing I have learned is that what you say to yourself matters most, more than what people say to you. If someone tells you that you are dumb, but if you don't tell yourself that you are dumb, you don't believe that you are dumb. It's what you tell yourself that is important. If people all around you say you are dumb, well, you tell yourself that, no, I'm intelligent. Look at what I did. Look at what I did. Look at this. Look at what I was able to achieve. With that intelligence, I won't do that. You keep telling yourself. You keep telling yourself that irrespective of what is happening outside, the voice inside is I'm intelligent. And with time, you see that the intelligence flows out. So it's very important, you know, for you to build resilience and all that. So concerning methodology, one can mix and match, but definitely there's going to be a goal, there are going to be opportunities, there are going to be obstacles, and definitely there'll be actions because without actions, you can't achieve your goals. There are some things you need to do to achieve your goals. And there are principles when it comes to coaching. There are a lot of principles that you know, as, as the coach goes on with the clients, you start bringing the principles. Like I mentioned about that story I talked about going somewhere, you can drive, yeah, it's your car, you have everything, and you're waiting for someone to drive you. What's stopping you from jumping inside the car? So that's the principle of you know, self dependency and don't, you know, taking your destiny in your own hands. Your destiny is your own, in your own hands. You don't need to depend on anybody. Every, there's nobody that cannot be replaced, you know, in, in your quest for good. Everybody can be replaced. You are the only one because it's your goal, it's your dream, it's your song, it's your book. It's whatever you want to achieve. It's yours. So you are the only one that cannot be replaced. Every other person can be replaced, you know. Everybody else, you are the one that is the constant in all these situations. So I wouldn't get hung up on methodologies, but basically getting the principles. And there are several principles in coaching, several principles that it will take us the whole day to talk about it if I intend to go. My goal is to actually let people experience a bit of coaching so that they appreciate it and you know, seek for that knowledge, maybe get a coach themselves or you know, go and learn more, basically. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much. Um, you know, uh, some people don't know. I'm actually a certified career coach. Oh, okay. fantastic. My specialization is career coaching. I'm a CUDA certified oh, okay. career coach. Yeah. You know, there are, some people don't know that there are also specializations, so to speak. So, for example, yeah. you are in life, I am focused on. So, if you bring yeah. anything that I have from career, I will refer you to someone else. Not as okay. if I don't have an idea, but I am more focused and trained for Oh, yeah, career. definitely. Yeah. And I actually also have a coach. Maybe you know her. My coach's name is uh, Polake Oluwole. We call her FO, Coach FO. Yeah. She definitely. Is a member of ICF. Mm. Any, anybody that wants to, do. if you want to achieve anything meaningful, you need it. There's no way, there's no shortcuts. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So my final question for, for this evening, okay, will be how as an HR practitioner or professional, especially in-house to an organization, how can you teach coaching to your management? How can you put coaching on your budget, for example, for maybe the, half, the remaining half of the year or the next financial year? Would you advise that you get members of staff trained to become coaches or bring in external coach? Can you share one or two examples of how you have seen coaching work in the context of an organization, especially HR being the driver of that particular area? Okay, like I said initially in my presentation, the best way is for the HR person to get a coach because if the person has not experience the power of coaching there's no way you can convincingly tell anybody else about it you must have experienced the power of coaching so that it drives you to 
talk more passionately, more knowledgeably about coaching. There's no way you must have experienced that coaching. There's no other shortcut to you. You have to experience coaching for you to be able to sell it to your executive management and for you to be able to, you know, because even these things, there is not even with the cost. If you, ex if you explain and talk about it and the, and the benefits very well, there's no way they will, they will see that it can actually improve production. It can improve, it, 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 it will improve the health of the organization. That's why, you know, when I look at um, like the US um, economy and everything, I would attribute some of the growth of the economy to the proliferation of coaching as a profession. And, and you will see that as coaching becomes more and more acceptable in Africa, in Nigeria, you will see that we'll, we'll be moving forward because there are so many limiting beliefs that it's only coaching that can help you know, unplug. So the, the, the best advice I would say I give is for that HR manager, HR supervisor, HR director to experience the power of coaching. That's the only way the person can be fired up enough to talk convincingly to management that you know, they have to do coaching. And you know that there are some platforms that they have democratized, democratized coaching, whereby the, the executive can just pay for it and, you know, they, they get coaching. I think that place is ICF certified. I've forgotten about the name. So that it's not so, so expensive. People can, you know, the confidentiality is assured. The organization does not know your coach. You're, you are the only one that knows the person that will be coaching you and, you know, all that. So it's, it's something that there's no, other, there's no other way that the HR person can be able to convince management to add it to budget except they experience coaching themselves. And you, if, you, if you, since you said you are, you, are, you are a certified career coach, you know that coaching is a process. It's not something you just... <laughs> you just see the benefits with one or two sessions. It's, it builds up over time, just like one of the principles, consistency compounds. What you're doing consistently compounds. You might not see the benefits now, but in the next two, three, four months, you see the benefits, just like exercise. When you start exercising to lose weight, you might not see the benefits, but by the time you do it for two, three months, you see that, wow. I'm more energized, I've lost this weight and all that. So there's nothing worth having that it will not compound with time. It's a process. It's not an event that just happens. Somebody comes, coach all of you, and they're all okay, young kid, or you know, it doesn't work that way. It's a process, it compounds and it builds up the benefits over time. Thank you so, so much. If you don't mind, I would like you to please drop your contact details, phone number, email, however people can reach you. I would like to encourage anyone joining tonight. If you have not experienced the power of coaching, you have seen it literally displayed tonight. Coach Bosse only is highly recommended. She is very proficient and prolific without hesitation, without any reservation. I offer you to her uh, tonight. Please <laughs> take down her phone numbers, her emails, and whatever contact details she's generous enough to share with us tonight. And please explore the power of coaching. I did it once and I got stuck. I mean, I've been the, the client now or the coaching, okay. as you we, we sometimes call it coaching is very powerful um, for some of us on this call in addition to us trying to get coaches ourselves if you could get your maybe ceo or your c suite executive to subscribe to coaching and you're able to link them with coaches you will see that some of these problems we are having with the executive will become resolved oh definitely because, the you know, quality of leadership will be radi radically improved the quality you know, sometimes I just imagine that these are our leaders in Nigeria. Let me just get one of them to really coach. <laughs> you will see the difference. You, 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 it will be 
Wonderful. <laughs> you, you know, I, I was at an executive uh, program um, late last year, and one of the facilitators there was telling us how for the year 2022, all their C-suits, they got two coaches each for all the oh. C-suit members. Wow. Note, not they one would... coach each. One coach was a professional coach. The other was a personal coach. Oh, so wow. one coach was focusing on business issues. The other was focusing on personal, personal. issues. I was yeah. in awe because they realized that if the executives are better able to manage their personal issues, they will be more okay. effective on the job. Yeah. You understand? I'm just trying to show this real life example to show how some people have taken coaching to that level. Not one coach, two coaches two. each wow. by executive. Wow. One wow. focuses strictly on official, the other strictly on personal. personal. And they had a budget for it. Yes. Oh, wow. This you see that? You, you see that? You see that the organization will move forward, it will have a leap. And you know, that's why some people say, ah, some people are doing ritual. <laughs> so, <laughs> some people are they have just seen, they have just seen what it takes to move forward and they have committed to it. And definitely they will move forward. This, this, you know, life is governed by principles. Once you follow the principle, it will work. I like that. Once you follow the principles it will work, okay? Consistency compounds. You don't gym once or twice and lose weight. You yeah. do it <laughs> over time, okay? I hope some of these beautiful nuggets that our coach tonight has dropped consistently throughout tonight's program will put it to use. I must sincerely thank you so much, ma'am, for making yourself available. Thank you for having for me. so generously and magnanimously out of your wealth of experience and out of, from your heart. You know, when someone is teaching with a passion, you know, it's almost as if you just want to transform our life, our <laughs> career, our business, our family, our faith. We so much appreciate you. I also like to thank everyone who has joined tonight. To be honest, I knew that the numbers tonight will be at this rate. But I need to tell you something. The things that transform people's careers not everybody rushes it. I'll yes, say yes. We, I won't mention, we did a topic yesterday. It was on a weekday in there to see the crowd. Yeah, the I joined that. that is so. transformational in career yeah. doesn't look attractive to the crowd. Yeah. And this is one of it. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining tonight. Mm -hmm. Much more importantly, if you don't have a coach, get one. One is available before you tonight, Coach Boss F. Play. By uh -huh. all means. That may be a massive game changer. Thank oh, you definitely. so much, ladies and gentlemen. I think we can call it a wrap. Thank you yeah. so much. Thank you Good so night. much. Thank you so much. Good night. I really enjoyed myself tonight. Good night. Me too, me too. Thank you, Henry. Thank you, Onajero. Onajero, I'm on your case. Thank so. you. I'm on <laughs> your case, Onajero. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you.